Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. And I have a great episode for you guys today. And I'm gonna talk about something that is near and dear to my heart as I got into the IT field in the networking field. Networking has always been something that I've been passionate about. It's super cool and it allows traffic to flow across both the physical as well as virtual networks. Today we're gonna to cover the topic of network segmentation. It seems like for many, if they are getting into home lab environments or or they are simply learning about best practices when it comes to configuring their networks for home lab purposes or just for a home network. Network segmentation is something that many find challenging and they don't really understand the underlying technologies and solutions that they can take advantage of to properly segment a network. Today is going to be an a la carte of network segmentation. I'm going to take you guys through many different technologies that are cornerstone to providing network segmentation that includes VLANs, firewalls, routing, and we're also going to look at solutions that are enterprise grade solutions that you can actually get your hands on fairly easily, such as VMware NSX, and it can do something called micro segmentation. What is that? Well, stick around. We're going to fill the cup full of network segmentation today. You're going to enjoy what you see. The first technology that we are going to describe in detail is the VLAN or virtual LAN. It is arguably the cornerstone technology or networking construct that allows us to properly segment a home lab network. Now, what exactly is a VLAN? Many struggle with this concept as they try to figure out how to introduce network segmentation properly into a home lab network or a home network in general. A VLAN essentially allows us to take this physical cable that ordinarily would only be able to carry one physical network between a device and a switch port, and it allows us to essentially virtualize this network cable so that using VLANs we can essentially create over 4,000 virtual LANs as a configuration maximum for the VLAN technology. So if you can imagine this physical cable now being able to carry over 4,000 virtual networks instead of the single network that is the physical cable, you're starting to understand the true power of virtual LANs or VLANs. VLANs also are a security mechanism and most best practices will align network segmentation along with virtual LANs. Virtual LANs are also associated typically in best practice documentation as aligned with a single subnet. So a VLAN will align with a single subnet. Can you run more than one subnet on a single VLAN? Yes, you can do that. However, it's however when you are configuring devices or when you're configuring other technologies such as modern firewalls, most will align a VLAN and associate that with a single subnet. In the diagram that you see before us, this demonstrates unfortunately what most people's home internet connections look like and what their home network looks like in general. There is no segmentation. In other words, all devices are connected to a central device such as a consolidated switch firewall modem device that also offers wireless connectivity. Most people simply hook devices to this central device that connects them to their ISP. This works and it's functional and many home networks prove that out. However, when we're thinking about security and thinking about how we want to have certain types of traffic segmented from the default network configuration that most people have in their home network, this is less than ideal. As you start delving into building out a home lab for yourself and for your learning, you're going to want to segment that traffic to ensure that your home lab is not only secure, the traffic between your general purpose network, such as we see here, and your home lab environment are totally isolated. Network segmentation is a great first step towards creating a more secure network. Why is that? Well, if we look at our diagram now, when we take a look at how a flat network operates, 
all of the devices can see the other devices by default because they're plugged into the same physical LAN. There are no virtual LANs involved. So if we look at an attacker that invades a network, let's say to our trusty desktop in our diagram, that attacker that has infected the desktop now has full visibility without any security mechanism from preventing him from pivoting and also attacking the laptop and your trusty home lab server that you've set up that have a lot of credentials stored, such as your cloud account, your enterprise subscriptions. This is less than ideal and one of the main reasons that we want to introduce network segmentation. I have a network simulator program called Packet Tracer, and it's a great way to show and explain to you guys how easy it is to actually create a virtual LAN on a network switch. First and foremost, you're going to have to have a network switch that is VLAN capable. To create a VLAN is very simple. So I'm at the enable prompt on my Cisco switch, and we can actually take a look and see which VLANs are already configured. So if we do a show VLAN, we can see that the trusty default VLAN 1, which exists on just about every switch on the planet, and it's the default VLAN, and we can see that all of our switch ports are a member of VLAN 1. So to move forward, we actually have to create the new VLAN. So let's get to a configure prompt. We're going to uh, go to config T, and we're going to issue the command VLAN 100. As simple as that, we have just created a VLAN. And if we want to give VLAN 100 a name, we, we're going to call this LAN. So if we do a do show VLAN, now we can see that we have VLAN 100, and it is active. Great, we've got a new VLAN created. As you can see though, we still have all of the ports as a member of VLAN 1. How do we get all of those ports or a subset of ports into VLAN 100? In the Cisco iOS world, we have to configure the port for the particular VLAN and set the port type for this particular VLAN. We're going to pick on port interface FA01. We're going to issue the command switch port and we can issue a question mark to see what options are available. We're going to make this an access VLAN. In other words, we want the switch itself to issue the VLAN tag that's going to encapsulate all of the Ethernet frames that come across this particular port. This to be an access VLAN. Access VLAN 100. And as simple as that, now if we issue a do show VLAN, we're going to now see that in VLAN 100, we have essentially peeled off FA0 slash 1 from VLAN 1, and now we've moved that particular port over to VLAN 100. Now, I want to show you guys in practice how VLANs actually segment traffic. Even if we have two devices on the same subnet or the same IP network, VLANs essentially provide a wall if they are different between those two devices where they cannot communicate. In my handy packet tracer configuration, I have PC0 that is configured with an IP address of 192.168.1.1. On PC1, I have an IP address of 192.168.1.2. 1.2. Both have a subnet mask of a slash 24 network. However, let's see if they can effectively communicate. If I go to desktop, I'm going to open a command prompt, and if I ping 192.168.1.1, we see that pings do not return. We're getting a timeout. Why is that? One is on one IP address is 1.1, one is 1.2, they're on the same subnet mask, but let's take a look at where this PC is plugged in. So I had this effectively plugged into fast ethernet 0 slash 1, which we know is VLAN 100, whereas this PC is connected to fast ethernet 0 slash 2, which we know is still in the default VLAN. So now we're starting to get the picture of how VLANs actually segment traffic. Okay, let's come full circle now. Let's place port FA0 slash 2 in VLAN 100, and let's repeat our test. As you can see, I have added FA0 slash 2 to VLAN 100. So now let's take a look and see what our ping results look like. Let's go back here, and as you can see, we have a reply from PC0, which we know is on FA0 slash 1. 
with an IP address of 1.1. So our 1.2 PC is now able to communicate with PC0 at 1.1. Now we're starting to get the true power of VLANs. What I have now is a logical concept of how we might segment a home lab network from other devices on the network. If we have a VLAN capable switch, we can essentially create VLANs for every device type or group of devices that we want to segment on our home lab network. This may include, of course, our home lab servers. We want to have a separate virtual network network for those home lab servers. Then we may have a VLAN for IoT devices. Then we may have a network for general purpose local area network traffic, your laptops, your computers, your iPads, other tablets, mobile devices. Then we may have a security network if we have security cameras. By creating separate VLANs for each of those device types, we can logically segment that traffic from each other and have that traffic still able to communicate to the internet and with other devices if we configure it that way. But now wait, doesn't that defeat the purpose? We just segmented our traffic. We said we don't want them to communicate. So why would we have them communicate? The beauty of a modern firewall solution is that the firewall is able to communicate with and understand VLANs. We can then build out our security rules to allow only certain traffic between those VLANs. And between one VLAN and another, we may have a single host that we want to be able to communicate with that entire subnet. With other VLANs, we may have more that we want to be able to communicate with. And with a firewall, again, we're able to build out those security rules such that we can essentially have exactly the traffic that we want to communicate between those VLANs. Using a modern open source firewall solution such as PFSense allows you to easily adopt the network security principles that we've already talked about using VLANs and firewall rules to segment traffic and allow only specific traffic between your different VLANs. Let's take a look at a few of the features of PFSense that allow us to support this network security model in our home lab environment. First of all, as we can see in PFSense, I am running a virtual version of PFSense. So as a virtual machine, I have added additional network interfaces to this virtual machine. You can essentially assign interfaces for each of those networks. That PFSense interface is the next hop route, and that allows traffic to be routed between the VLANs if you so choose. However, again, with the firewall rules, we can be very specific with the source or destination of a particular VLAN subnet. Under firewall, we've got firewall rules, and with each interface, we can assign associate certain firewall rules to filter traffic as needed. As you can see with LAN, LAN2, or DMZ, we can add firewall rules specific to that particular network. For instance, for the LAN network, I can add a firewall rule. I can choose the interface for LAN. I can choose block if I want to block a particular type of traffic. And then for the source, we can specify the source that we want to block traffic for. For instance, if we want to block traffic from the LAN2 network, we can select LAN2 net. And of course, we've got our action as block. We can save that rule. Now we just simply need to apply our changes. Now the firewall changes have been applied and the rule is now active. As you can see, we have a new firewall rule associated with this interface and the subsequent network that blocks the source of the LAN2 network. So we can now see how easy it is with a modern firewall to essentially block or allow certain traffic from different hosts on different VLANs. This helps us to support a strong security posture in our network environment. Environment. Okay, guys, now into the even more nerdy and even more cool segmentation of our home lab network. Using VMware NSX, we can do what is called micro segmentation. Up until now, we've talked about segmenting different VLANs. However, what about workloads running within a particular VLAN? You may not want all workloads that are in a particular VLAN to be able to communicate with one another. When we're using a standard firewall, only the traffic that is destined to be routed is generally processed by firewall rules. If we need to restrict traffic between two hosts that exist on the same VLAN, they do not have to communicate 
communicate through the firewall. They have direct what we call line of sight connectivity at a layer two level on the VLAN itself. VMware NSX allows us to do something called micro segmentation, where even workloads on the same VLAN can have traffic rules processed and evaluated based on different constructs. In VMware NSXT, you can create a layer two segment. With a layer two segment, it is akin to what VMware used to refer to as a logical switch. And this logical switch is able to, in a software defined way using VMware NSX, it's able to apply firewall rules that evaluate traffic even for workloads that exist on the same layer two network. For instance, if I navigate to the security tab and down to the distributed firewall, I can create firewall rules based on different constructs within the environment. If you notice, I can click the pencil icon for the source. I have added my Active Directory infrastructure to the VMware NSX Manager. So that allows me to add groups and actually create firewall rules based on identity which is extremely powerful. So for instance, I can create a test group, set the members of that group based on an Active Directory group. So if I type in test group, I can select Active Directory groups to apply this firewall rule to. If I save out of this, I can actually build software defined firewall rules for micro segmentation where I can say someone in the test group can either be allowed traffic or we could drop or reject that traffic. So think about how powerful that could be. You could have one user log into a particular workstation and they are allowed access to the 10.1.149.158 resource. However, if members of the test group log in, they are denied access to that same resource. Even though these resources and the hosts that they are connecting from exist on the same VLAN. Awesome stuff. So guys, we have covered a lot of territory in this video. We've talked about VLANs, the basics of how VLANs are used in network segmentation and best practice security designs. We've also talked about firewall rules, how firewalls can bolster your security posture in your home lab network by filtering specific traffic between the VLANs so that you can allow certain hosts to communicate, whereas you can block all the rest or even block all traffic between certain VLANs. We also looked at VMware NSX, a software-defined network solution that includes a software-defined firewall that allows you to do micro-segmentation even based on identity from Active Directory. Now, I know this is an enterprise paid solution. However, if you do buy into a VMUG Advantage solution, and you can easily find coupon codes for VMUG Advantage, you can play around with and actually have access to VMware NSX in your home lab network and using that powerful software defined technology to further secure the workloads you have running in your home lab. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been fun to cover all of these really exciting network fundamentals and technologies that we can use for proper network security. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys soon.